Let's talk to Jared about what he wants next, his thoughts on all this, the killer gorilla, kind enough to join us. Hello, Jared. How are you? I'm doing good, Ariel. Hello, how are you doing? And thank you for having me. I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for being on. So yeah, very, very interested in getting your thoughts on all this. First, can I ask, uh, when you were offered the opportunity to fly to Sydney just to be the backup, uh, were you down right away with that? I mean, that's a long ways to go and you're training. You don't even know if you're going to get the fight. Was that a no-brainer for you or did you have to be convinced? No, that's something that I actually uh, uh, put out there Prior to even getting the call, you know, um, uh, after my after the fight with Vittori, you know, I mentioned that in a few of the uh, post fight press conferences and, and media uh, interviews and stuff that I'd be that the fight was coming up. I'm willing to be the backup, which uh, you know, also for me was saying that I'm willing to step in if any any of those guys get injured, you know, come, uh, uh, leading up to the fight. So. Um, that was my stance then, and then, you know, it came to fruition. They gave me the call to be the backup. I flew out there. It was a good trip. Uh, the weather was nice, you know. Uh, Sydney was very, still, Sydney was cool. It was a good experience, um, a nice little stamp on my passport. And, uh, you know, uh, it all culminated in uh, uh, what will soon be an historic event, and uh, especially as far as the middleweight division is concerned. When all this was agreed upon, was it said to you, hey, you go out there and do this, you're getting the winner? No, nobody told me that. Uh, that wasn't really on the table. So, uh, no. Short answer, no. Okay, because sometimes, you know, it's promised. You just felt, hey, let me be there, and if someone falls out, I'll be there waiting. Yeah, that. And, you know, hopefully it uh, puts me in good standing a yeah. little bit closer to getting the title. You know, if I'm in consideration to be in the backup for the title, I should be in consideration of fighting for the title in general, I feel. So yeah. um, that's how I felt. I wasn't trying to get in that position. I felt like I was already there, especially after beating uh, Marvin Vittori, who was ranked number three ahead of me at the time. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Uh, that was my stance now or then, and it's an even stronger stance now, I feel, uh, that I have in the middleweight division. Sure, and, and we'll get to that in a moment, but I'm just curious. Last week, we had Eric Nixick on, the head coach at Extreme Couture, who's also the head coach for Sean Strickland, and he told us that when Sean had his little incident with the fans and then uh, the open workout and all that, that he had heard that there were talks of flying your head coach, John Crouch, from Arizona to Australia because there were talks of pulling Sean from the card and putting you in. This is like Tuesday, Wednesday. Did you hear the same? I did. You know, I woke up, I think it was Wednesday when I woke up and, uh, uh, it was actually, it was Tuesday. We were, I was doing check-ins and I, you know, we ran into Sean. He was in there signing his poster and he was telling us his story, the same story that gotten out that, you know, he had, uh, he was out on a beach somewhere greeting fans or, or and you know, you know how fans do they come up to you and greet you and stuff. And one yeah. of them said some slick shit to him and he gave him a nice one to the, uh, to the body <laughs> and, uh, went along his day. And, uh, you know, uh, there was the potential of that coming out to become, you know, you know how some people are, they want, they'll press charges and yeah. try to get some attention or even a paycheck out of it. So, um, it was one of those situations, you know, um, but uh, that's what I heard, you know, he, you know, that's the story that I got from him. And then the next day I woke up, I was hearing stories from uh, other sources that this fight is, could potentially be in jeopardy. Stay ready, stay prepared. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, that's what it was. But for me, I just went along my day. I was there to make weight anyway. If I was going to fight, I was going to fight whoever um, and win, of course. But um yeah, I heard the same things, and uh, it never really came to. Uh, it got close, you know, because uh, how close did uh, it get? Uh, Crouch, he was about to fly out. He was close to you know, flying out. Was about to fly out my corners. Yeah, he was. He was close to flying. He was at the airport actually. Wow. And uh, yeah, he was at the airport. He was uh, they were uh, calling for boarding and stuff. And he was about to board, and then he was looking on his. Uh, I guess he found uh, saw some video of uh, Sean doing uh, media day stuff, and you know, as if he was still fighting things like that. So. He decided to pull the plug and not come, and um, 
you know, it never you turned out to be anything. You didn't get a call from the UFC saying like, hey, don't come. Like they were going to make him fly 14 or whatever that is. Hours? Yeah, I never got a call from any. I, I never talked to any UFC officials directly. Okay. So um, I had the hearsay from some, uh, from one of my corners who, you know, who communicated with some, some other individuals. Um, um, but I was just there handling business. Um, if it was going to happen, then shit, that would have been funny as hell. And I would have been ready to come swoop in to save the day. Wow. But, um, yeah, it was kind of crazy. You know, it could have been hectic for most people, most people who, who would have focused on it, but I wasn't focused on, on it. So it didn't really have as much impact on me. But I can understand, you know, the uh, gravity of the situation. It almost happening. And, uh, well, it was a wild, it was a wild trip to say the least. Yeah. How is is that stressful for you? Like you, you're you about to maybe fight for the belt. You don't know you're in, you're out. Uh, you don't know, you know, like that's a, that's a lot. Yeah. Like I was saying, it could have been, you know, for, for most people, but I wasn't going to allow it to, to put any stress on me. If anything, I was just happy that, you know, something was happening. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't happy that somebody, somebody's future was in jeopardy or anything like that. You know what I mean? I don't wish ill on anybody or anything like that. But uh, it was kind of funny that something was, you know, those wheels start began to turn during that whole trip, you know, uh, during fight week of all times. You know what I'm saying? You don't expect this type of stuff to happen during fight week and a championship match uh, being jeopardy like that. So uh, I guess it wasn't any real jeopardy. Maybe it was more of the, more of the uh, publicity uh, wheels turning and, and turning into a whole stunt sort of thing. Something for us to click on and talk about. And, sure, sure, sure. You know. Um, and, and but um, just curious, uh, like when you're the backup fighter, how does it work? Does someone call you at some point on Saturday or, or I guess Sunday because this fight was a Sunday and say like, hey, you're officially off the hook. You don't because like even after you weigh in, you're still probably want like something could happen, right? Someone could get sick. Someone could. So when do you know that you're officially not fighting? Uh, usually you should. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, but by, by the time the event starts, right? Oh, wow. And if the hell, if I'm out of the event and I'm tossing back drinks and they come back, hey man, are you ready to fight? <laughs> what you kind of just stepped, uh, you know, speaker just fell on them. <laughs> I tried, I tried my best to play, you know, pass the sobriety test, go out there and whoop somebody ass. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. But I doubt something like, you know, what's the, what are the chances of something like that happening that close to the fight? Because I went to the event, I went, to, I was there from the first fight to the last. So um, I was there, I was ready. Shit, if they would have called me, the only thing I didn't have was a mouthpiece and a cup. At the, at the event, but um, if they would have called me that morning, I would have been ready, you know, so. Wow. Um, after you make weight, you know what I mean? For me, the, the whole thing, it wasn't really a fight camp, it was more of like a diet camp. So all I had to do is get to the weight, weight cut, make the weight, and then everything else, let everything else fall in place. The fight almost fell into place. That was yeah. kind of crazy for me. That's the uh, biggest thing for me. The fight almost fell in place, but uh, I made the weight, uh, Another easy way cut, cut and dry, made it happen. And um, I made a pretty penny, a nice paid vacation, got to see a cool event and um, see myself be put in, in, in a closer position to get in a title fight. Uh, what did you think was going to happen? If we would have talked on Friday, Saturday before, what was your prediction? Well, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I always say this, that I'll never count anybody out in this sport. Anybody who does mixed martial arts at this level has the potential to win the fight. You know what I mean? So, um, but the chances of Sean Strickland fighting, you know, uh, the way Sean Strickland fights and succeeding, being successful for me were slim. I didn't think, I, I didn't think I was going to see what happened, happen, you know, um, um, and Sean Strickland didn't do anything outrageous. He didn't do anything extraordinary. He didn't do anything. We ain't never seen Sean Strickland does. He does the same thing he does every time. Um, and to great effect, you know what I'm saying? So, uh. Hats off to him. He made it happen. It was kind of crazy watching it happen. I had my hands on my uh -huh. head watching this, looking at my, uh, looking at Rob, my corner man. I was like, man, is this really happening? He asked me, is this really happening? And uh, uh, it was wild happy watching it go down live like that. It was crazy seeing it happen live. Um, I was more surprised. I wasn't surprised at, at the performance that Sean had. He did, like I said, he did exactly what he does. I was more surprised at Israel's inability to make adjustments. And to uh, make make an at least make one adjustment or two adjustments, you know what I mean. So um, 
that was the biggest thing for that was the biggest, most surprising thing for me in that fight. But other than that, man, watching them win the title, that was fucking awesome. Watching anybody win the title is, is awesome. You know what I mean? So it's amazing. So uh unless unless you don't like him, unless uh-huh. you don't like him, and you know, very few people I don't I dislike in in, in the world. So and but um I would imagine for you this was a good result, right? You have a win over Sean. Uh, you have a loss against Izzy. Better that the guy that you have a win over is the new champion, right? Fresh, uh, a fresh champion who you have history with and good history with. You probably walked away from that event happy, right? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't use those words happy. Okay, but uh, I will say, uh, you know, I will say I was happy for Sean. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> so, but uh. I walked I walked away from that event in let's say a state of realization, realizing that man, I'm in a better position to get a title, uh get to get a title fight sooner than later, you know what I mean? Um and I'm better than ever. So I was I was you know, the cards stack up in my favor, if you will. I've already beaten the new champ and uh they, I feel like that gives me a uh, a good backing to get a next title fight, especially since I beat him uh, mm-hmm. quite recently. So here's the question, the biggest question of them all. In your opinion, who should Sean Strickland fight in his first title defense? Me, of course. That's what I'm saying. He should fight me. <laughs> Why? Uh, he, yeah, he should fight me in his first title defense. Everybody's saying they should do the rematch with Israel, but... Um, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what's in his contract. I don't know if he has like, you know, those rematch clauses in his contract and stuff like that for every title defense he has or what. But um, you know, we we hear we hear the talks of that happening. We've heard the talks of uh Strickland versus uh Duplessis, maybe, or even the talks of Strickland versus uh Shamaev, uh if he beats uh Costa or whatever there. But um if anybody has has a has a, a a stake to claim. It'd be the champ because he's been a great champ. But you know what I'm saying? The way he lost the uh the way he lost that fight, the fact that he just came back from a rematch, you know, weighs heavy on his uh on his argument, I'd say. My argument is I've already beaten a champ. I just beat the number three guy. You know what I mean? Um if you don't want to give me the champ, give me the contender. That will be Duplessis, right? Or give me Israel. You know what I mean? Uh, everybody's talking about Shemaev as if he's a contender, but he's not a contender. You know what I mean? He may be a contender at welterweight, but at middleweight, middleweight, that's a different, that's a different story. So I think they're waiting for this test and cost of the play out to uh, to inflate him and pump him up to that title fight that they that he wants very bad. I'm sure he wants very bad, especially now that the title has changed hands. Like the way it has. So um, when this thing's happen, when, when we see titles change hands, I'm sure a lot of us fighters get uh, antsy and our pantsy and thinking that this is our opportunity to get it because, you know, that's the way it seems on the outside. But um, I'm ready to get this title. I'm ready for the title fight. I think I have a good argument for the title fight right now. So I'm I'm trying to bank on it right now. That's why I'm running my mouth as much as I can. Letting the world know, trying to get as much of the world behind it. Uh, you feel and, comfortable doing that? Because I saw even like on Dana White's page, you're writing comments like, you know, you're you're, you're not known to be very loud when it comes to this part of the game. Um, yeah. You have to be out here now to puff your chest out because let's be honest, those guys that you mentioned, a lot of them have like very loyal and passionate fan bases. So you kind of have to break through that noise. Are you comfortable yeah. doing all of this? I mean, it, it seems like I have to because, again, I have a, a bigger stake to claim to this to this next title. But my name isn't getting mentioned. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm hearing a lot of people not mentioning my name, but they're mentioning these other people's names. And I'm thinking, wow, you know what I mean? Didn't you know? Have has anybody not seen what I've done since I fought the last two champions? You know, I fought the champion and uh, lost that fight, but it wasn't like a dramatic loss. He didn't just handle me in that fight. You know what I'm saying? He used his jab effectively. He used his movement and his leg kicks, and I wasn't able to make anything happen. But uh, I've grown since that fight, and I beat the current champ uh, with just an inkling of what I've developed into now. You know what I mean? 
And you saw what I've done with that development since that last fight. But in my in the next fight, I'm breaking records with this ability, with this, with this newfound potential of mine. And now I found even more in this potential. I feel like I've grown even more. And I say this all the time, and I prove it in my next fight every time in the last couple of years that I'm getting better and better. And uh, I'm getting even more better. And I'm growing even more confident. I guess that's why I'm running my mouth now because I'm in a position to where running my mouth could have career-altering implications. A title fight, the winning that title is career-altering, as we all know. So um, I'm grabbing hold of this, this bull while I can. I'm going to wrestle his down, wrestle his ass down, put him in a choke or uh, bash his fucking head in or something like that. You know what I mean? And uh, on top of that, I feel like I'm the best in the world. I feel like you know what I'm saying? I have to, I, I can beat anybody in the world. You know what I mean? Um, the same way I felt the way Sean has the potential to beat Israel, I feel like I have even more potential to beat anybody in, in on the face of the planet. So um, I'm growing. I'm getting even better. So that 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 confidence, that uh, um, that big pair of balls is getting even bigger, if you will. So uh, I'm ready, man. I'm ready to get in there for the title. I'm ready to show people the growth that I've already acquired. The uh, um, ready to let go of the potential that I've already had, the skills that I've all, that um, that I've um, had in waiting, that I'm ready to just unleash on the UFC, and um, you know, take what's mine, claim what's mine, claim the title, claim the top of the mountain, and um, yeah, just go on from there. You know what I mean? You know, you you mentioned right a lot of the- things, and it's uh it's uh, very easy to look at those facts and say like yeah you deserve it there's one thing you didn't mention which i think strengthens your case even more and that's the fact that you went out to be the backup fighter i know it wasn't promised to you but you did that and we've seen over the last year or so colby covington did that and we were told hey because he's doing that and because he did that he's getting a title shot even though he hadn't fought in a year or so when he did it alex volkanovsky did it in abu dhabi and he got the islam fight afterwards and so is there any part of you that feels like just at, at, at the end of the day, because you did that, in addition to everything that you just said, the win over Sean, the win over Vittori, all that, you went out there, you were the backup, you flew to Sydney. That should put you ahead of everyone else. Uh, you know, I could, I could, I could, lay, I could sit on that sentiment if I wanted to, but not, I don't really want to sit on that sentiment. You know what I mean? I got paid to go out there and do that. You know what I mean? So that contract was fulfilled and being the next in t- line for the title. Um, maybe before I signed the contract, I should have put something, I should have asked for something like that in my in the, in the contract. But I didn't. I was happy with what, what was uh, offered. <laughs> and um, that wasn't part of it. You know what I'm saying? Being next in line for the title. I, like I said, I, I personally feel that that should at least uh, put me in consideration if you consider me to be considering me to be the backup, you should at least consider me to at least fight for the title, especially more now that the title has changed hands to a person who I've recently beat. Right. You know what I mean? Um, um, again, I've shown that I've made improvements, a, a fight. I made, and not only have I made improvements, I made improvements fighting against the top of the division. You know what I mean? So, um, I haven't been getting blown out of the water. These fools ain't been, uh, uh, handing my ass to me in, in the octagon. Because I, uh, anyway, um, and on top of that, I feel like uh, I don't. That's and that's another reason why I I'd rather stand on my ability than stand on. Um, oh, I know. It's maybe not item the, one, but it could be item five. Yeah. You know, it, like when you're listing. Well, out, yeah, it's in there. I'm trying to help you it, out. It, 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 I'm it trying to help you there. out. I'm trying to add it to the mix. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm trying to. I, you deserve that recognition, I appreciate and that. you should have that yeah, check I next to you that. because. We were told Colby's getting a title shot because he's the backup, and 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 Alex got the title shot because. So I just feel like that's another thing that you could say. By the way, you did mention, hey, if you're not going to give me a title shot, like what about Drickus? Give me that. There was one name that I was wondering what you thought about. If it doesn't work out where you get the title shot next, what about running it back with Robert Whitaker, who's considered one of the best guys at 85, and you have a history with him as well? Is that of interest to you? That is a bit, that is of interest to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, is Robert still that guy that gets you the title shot when you beat him? You know, like mm-hmm. everybody's counting on this thing with Drake is, mm-hmm. or did Drake is take that away from him? You know? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I'm down to fight Robert. I'd love to fight Robert again. You know what I'm saying? I want to fight all of them. That's what I want to do. But professionally speaking, 
I have to try to get the most out of this while I'm here. And, you know, the uh, general consensus is get that title and defend that title and do it a thousand times. Uh, another general consensus is run your mouth and do all this, but I'm trying to show y'all a different way. You know what I mean? I'm trying to show y'all the way to warrior. I'm here to fight and show y'all good skills and, and how to uh, be effective and fight. Not trying to be flashy in this thing. You know what I mean? I'm being effective. So, uh, take, take note of that. You guys, when y'all see me go out there and do my thing, take note of the effectiveness of what I'm doing. And, uh, Eventually, I'm going to start taking on students. And if y'all want to be effective and be able to have long careers like I'm having, you know what I mean? Be in your 40s and your 50s doing this. I'll let your boy. All right. Fair enough. Uh, by the way, can I just ask, uh, you wrote a, a post on Instagram where you talked about this. And then at the end, you wrote something to the effect. I think uh, you were talking about the poster for you versus Strickland. And you wrote, P.S., something to the effect of like that you were high for that. Is that what was that? Were you actually high for that picture? What, and I think we have the picture just for, uh, you know, um, oh, there it is, a uh, close up. Were you actually high or are you just joking? I, I couldn't tell. <laughs> I may have been sleepy. Okay. Because <laughs> that's taken on Fight Week, right? Huh? That, that photo. Those take, posters? Yes, yes. Yeah, we do those when we check in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was high. Yeah. Uh, okay, you were high. Okay, yeah, cool. I mean, they that's allowed, right, in Nevada? It is, yes. Okay. So, uh, yes, Nevada doesn't, uh, it's not like, it's not against a performance enhancer. And that's I'm good. Not, and you can't, like, I'm not smoking before I'm going to compete or anything no, like that. I'm not showing crazy. up to the arena, you know, high or anything like that. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, man, I, yeah, Hell yeah, I was high in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, you fight Sean Strickland next. How does that fight go? Well, uh, it's going to be way more. Uh, again, take a look at the last fight. Everybody's saying that he won that fight, but, you know, uh, I don't feel that way. You know what I mean? If that fight continued on, if there was no end to no rounds to that fight, he would have eventually gotten finished and knocked out in that fight. Mm -hmm. But um, he was dodging big shots. He wasn't walking me down screaming in my face. He wasn't Deshaun Strickland. You guys have grown to love as your champion. You know what I mean? He even said it himself. He fought like a bitch in that fight. So um, if he wants to redeem himself, get his man card back, like I said in the, in the Instagram post, if he wants to get his man card back as a, as a champion, he needs to see me. You know what I mean? Um, he did his thing against Israel. You know what I'm saying? That 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 pumps his man card. That, you know, it's a, that's a nice little check on his man card, but there's still a gorilla stamp on that man card that he didn't fight the way he says he fights. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do the man dance as he said he wanted to do. So um, that's the Strickland that I wanted to see. That's the Strickland that I was looking forward to fighting, you know? But I had to go in there and try to find him, and he was trying to be all slick and 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 and, and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? He fought me the same, kind of similar to how Israel fought me, you know what I mean? And uh, wait for, you know, Stay back and stay out of danger till you find your openings, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? That's a it's a smart tactical uh, way approach to fighting. But um, you know, I've gotten better at dealing with those guys too. So if you want to sit back and peck away and try to find your 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 your, your, your opening, it's gonna be another thing coming. You know what I mean? So uh, it's gonna it's so yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the Sean Strickland that I was expecting. The champion, the Tarzan. You know what I'm saying? Versus the killer gorilla. That's what I, the, the, the way it's supposed to be. Either either you're going to show the, either he's going to prove the story's true, that this man lived amongst gorillas and, and was became the clan leader of gorillas, or, you know what I mean? Or, or we're going to show him what, 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 really, what, what really happened. And when, when, when these fools came to the, to the jungle and tried to live amongst gorillas, you know what I mean? So, um, that's what I want to see, you know, <laughs> and this is the best opportunity to make that happen. You know, what What better way to make that happen? We can do it at the end of the year. We can do it or UFC 300. It'll be the best card. Right. I already got it laid out for you guys. And it'll and it'll and it'll lay out. It'll it'll put out in concrete the middleweight division for the next year. <laughs> Maybe the next year and a half. You put me and Strickland. Right. Tarzan versus the killer gorilla. Right. As the main event. And then you put DDP. Drake's Duplessis versus uh, Israel out of science, the cold main event. Mm. And that's going to pump up your pay-per-views. That's going to give you big pay-per-views. And if you, you if the UFC doesn't believe that uh, 
Me versus Strickland is a strong enough thing. You got that as a co-main event. That's like two main events right there already mm-hmm. on one card. That's gonna that's gonna that's gonna explode the pay per views, cool especially headline. since you're gonna have Israel and DDP settling or you know expressing what we what everybody sure, wants sure. to see there. And then if you really and then to to uh, further uh, uh, roadmap the middleweight division, you put the winner of Shamaya versus Costa. Versus Whitaker as the feature fight, Damn. right? So that's like having a, a two main. Uh, it's like having Chief three main support. events. Yeah, yeah, or a main event in two, in two, in two calls, in two co-main events, right? Yes. Um, or your two main events and then your co-main event as as expected, and that's going to set out the title picture for the middleweight division for at least the next year or year and a half. You got your title fight right there. You're going to have your next title fight with DDP or with uh, Drakus and, and Izzy fighting. Right. Yes. Um, and then after after that after that title fight gets settled, say middle of the year next year, or second or third quarter next year, you got an end of the year battle battle between the winner of Whitaker and uh and the winner of Shamayev and, and Costa. Right there, you have another contender match, or you can put that right there up against somebody else. You know what I mean? And then while the, all that's playing out, you develop all these other uh middleweight uh fighters. All these ones that you try to develop against the champion now, and I boost whoever they I can I can't pronounce yeah, the last yeah. name, so I'm not going to try But against all those other guys that the UFC needs to promote, wants to promote, bring up into the middleweight division to explode it big time. So there you go. I just gave fire you cards McMaynard, for the next... fire the matchmakers. Jared Kennedy or just <laughs> no, don't fire McMahon. Right I like McMahon. No, is my guy. man. He's a good guy. But McMahon, if you're listening, you know what I'm saying? You, you ain't got to put me on the payroll, but give me that title fight. That's right. You know what I'm saying? There you go. I gave you a card. You give me that title fight. Uh, good luck to you, Jared. Thanks for coming on. Uh, hopefully it works out for you. Appreciate you laying out your case. Thank you. I appreciate you giving me the chance to vent uh-huh. on this thing for the world to see. All right. Much love, <laughs> uh, my I man. I can't wait to see. <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens now. So thank you. Okay. Good luck. There he is. Jared Cannonier stating his case. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.